nature is busy creating absolutely unique individuals, whereas culture has invented a single mould to which all must conform. It is grotesque. The plain fact is that if you don't have a problem, you create one. If you don't have a problem, you don't feel that you are living. Thought can never capture the movement of life. It is much too slow. My interest is to point out to you that you can walk and please throw away all of those crutches. If you are all really handicapped, I wouldn't advise you to do any such thing. But you are made to feel by other people that you are handicapped so that they can sell you those crutches. Throw them away and you can walk. That's all that I can say. If I fall, that is your fear. Put the crutches away. You are not going to fall. We are not created for any grander purpose than the ants that are there or the flies that are hovering around us or the mosquitoes that are sucking our blood. have the courage to climb the mountain, swim the lakes, go on a raft to the other side of the Atlantic or Pacific. That any fool can do. But the courage to be on your own, to stand on your two solid feet, is something which cannot be given by anybody. The body is a fortuitous concourse of atoms. There is no death for the body only an exchange of atoms. Their changing places and taking different forms is what we call death. It's a process which restores the energy level in nature that has gone down. In reality, nothing is born and nothing is dead. Only if you reject all other paths can you discover your own path. Society has put before you the ideal of a perfect man. No matter in which culture you were born, you have scriptural doctrines and traditions handed down to you to tell you how to behave. You were told that through due practice, you can eventually come into the state attained by the sages, saints and saviors of mankind. And so you try to control your behavior, to control your thoughts, to be something unnatural. The fact is that we don't want to be free. What is responsible for our problems is the fear of losing what we have and what we know. To be yourself requires extraordinary intelligence. You are blessed with that intelligence. Nobody need give it to you. Nobody can take it away from you. He who lets that express itself in its own way is a natural man. I discovered for myself and by myself that there is no self to realize. That's the realization I am talking about. It comes as a shattering blow. It hits you like a thunderbolt. You have invested everything in one basket. Self-realization and in the end, suddenly you discover that there is no self to discover, no self to realize. And you say to yourself, what the hell have I been doing all of my life? That blasts you. Who am I? Who are you? You are what you are doing right now. What is morality? It is not the following of enjoined rules of conduct. It is not a question of standing above temptations or of conquering hate, anger, greed, lust and violence. Questioning your actions before and after creates the moral problem. 
What is responsible for this situation is the faculty of distinguishing between right and wrong and influencing your actions accordingly. Life is action. Unquestioned action is morality. Questioning your actions is destroying the expression of life. A person who lets life act in its own way without the protective movement of thought has no self to defend. What need will he have to lie or cheat or pretend or to commit any other act which his society considers immoral? I am not out to liberate anybody. You have to liberate yourself and you are unable to do that. What I have to say will not do it. I am only interested in describing this state, in clearing away the occultation and mystification in which those people in the holy business have shrouded this whole thing. Maybe I can convince you not to waste a lot of time and energy looking for a state which does not exist except in your imagination. Life has to be described in pure and simple physical and physiological terms. It must be demystified and de-psychologized. A messiah is the one who leaves a mess behind him in this world. If you have the courage to touch life for the first time, you will never know what hit you. Everything man has thought, felt and experienced is gone, and nothing is put in its place. It is fear that makes you believe that you are living and that you will be dead. What we do not want is the fear to come to an end. That is why we have invented all of these new minds, new sciences, new talks, therapies, choiceless awareness and various other gimmicks. Wanting has to go. Wanting to be free from something that is not there is what you call sorrow. Wanting to be free from sorrow is sorrow. There is no other sorrow. You don't want to be free from sorrow. You just think about sorrow without acting. Your thinking endlessly about being free from sorrow is only more material for sorrow. Thinking does not put an end to sorrow. Sorrow is there for you as long as you think. There is actually no sorrow there to be free from. Thinking about and struggling against sorrow is sorrow. Since you can't stop thinking, and thinking is sorrow, you will always suffer. There is no way out, no escape. Human thinking is born out of the neurological defect in the human species. Anything that is born out of human thinking is destructive. Thought is destructive. Thought is a protective mechanism. It draws frontiers around itself, and it wants to protect itself. It is for the same reason that we also draw lines on this planet and extend them as far as we can. What you know can never be the beyond. Whatever you experience is not the beyond. If there is any beyond, this movement of you is absent. The absence of this movement probably is the beyond, but the beyond can never be experienced by you. It is when the you is not there. Why are you trying to experience a thing that cannot be experienced? Freedom exists not in finding answers, but in the dissolution of all questions. The very motivation, the drive behind our demand to understand the laws of nature is to use them for the purpose of continuing the human species at the expense of every other form of life on this planet. Each cell of a living organism cooperates with the cell next to it. 
does not need any sentiment or declarations of undying love to do so. Each cell is wise enough to know that if its neighbour goes, it also goes. The cells stick together, not out of brotherhood, love or that kind of thing, but out of the urgent drive to survive. It is the same with us, but only on a larger scale. Soon, we will all come to know one simple thing. If I try to destroy you, I will also be destroyed. Sometimes we are so involved with our activity that we lose ourselves in it. And in that sense, we are living in the moment. <laughs>